How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian WWE podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred and anything we say, pun intended. You can listen to the podcast on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher on the go. Be sure to go check those out. And if you want to watch the video version, which this version will not be a video version, but other video versions of the podcast, it is available on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NHBWR. So be sure to go hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon for all upload updates. This will be posted on there, but it'll be just a audio version, unfortunately. Uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at no holds barred WP as well. You can follow myself at real Kyle masters and my co-host at corporate Tappy on Twitter. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram. No holds barred WP. We uh, post some plentiful pictures and uh, some great pictures for y'all. If, you, uh, if you're into that Instagram thing, you know, the Insta, Insta thing, I'll call, people call it Insta, but we're available to follow on there guys. And I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host as always, Kyle masters. And I am joined for the for the predictions today by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself. Where we're happy. Hello. Hello. Back. Back. And uh, got some no mercy predictions today. No mercy. <laughs> <laughs> that song we just heard. Wow. It's an interesting song. No mercy by the band is called Kit. K I T. Kit. Kit. You're gonna Kit. get Kit for this theme song. Uh, but guys, thanks for tuning back in. Unfortunately, couldn't get the video version up to you, so we're gonna do Spreaker. Good old Spreaker. Spre- good old Spreaker. We gotta we always rely on our our boy Spreaker, since YouTube is definitely killing a lot of YouTubers out there. Man, it, it, there's stuff going on with YouTube. It's a good thing we're not that big on YouTube, or else we'd be probably going through the same crap. But we don't even monetize our stuff on YouTube, anyways. We're we're nonprofit, so we it really doesn't affect us. But we feel for the people out there that you know they use YouTube to make money and. Some people actually make a living on YouTube off that stuff, so it sucks. It sucks this uh, ad apocalypse kind of thing. Um, all right, on Spreaker we actually got a new fan, Corporate Cappy. Mm-hmm. Her name is Cupid Girl One Two Five Little Miss Tricks mm-hmm. in now. So a big Alexa Bliss fan. So you got a plus one in Corporate Cappy's books already. Absolutely. And I, I remember her tweeting at uh, Michael Chow saying, "I'm I'm coming for that Twitter fan of the year," or something like that. Love it. <laughs> Better yeah, always some more job. competition. You can always use some more competition. Yep. But uh, other than that, guys, welcome to the No Mercy Predictions. Interesting oh, card. We got my, our boy uh, at Mark Top Shelf 22 listening from it from Italy. Just oh, Snapchatted me that he's listening live. So nice. Welcome to Mark from Italy. Mark from Italy. How's it going, man? I know you remember me. <laughs> uh, <sighs> also, Michael Chow has joined the chat. The champ from the West Coast. Or the host from the West Coast, the champ is here to defend my title. <laughs> uh, that glorious, prestigious NHBWP fan of the year. You should get a belt. Yeah. You know why we might? <laughs> I might go buy like one of those $20 uh, belts you get at like Walmart and stuff. And well, maybe we'll do something fun with that. Um, we got, I mean, we got this right in our podcast. We have the big, glorious Intercontinental Championship belt here that I bring to every single event we go to. Um, the same car card's up there. Don't worry. It's it, it's hanging. It, it fell down the other day. Oh, here, I'll put it back up for you. you know, we can't have a legit podcast without this in car card, you know? Absolutely. We can't be taken uh, seriously without it. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we're getting off trap here. I mean, we're, we're, we're freaking talking about no mercy when getting the sin car cards. God damn. Well, um, we got to go over Raw and SmackDown first. Yeah, we, we didn't have the lowdown show this week, guys. Apologize. We had some stuff going on this week, but... Uh, we promised you that we'd quickly go over Raw and SmackDown. It doesn't on... really deserve a long review. Not really, no. Especially what happened on SmackDown. And it got a lot of mainstream attention. But we'll go over Raw first just quickly now. And uh, Raw, it, 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 so it's semi-beat SmackDown this week. Semi, because there's a lot of good things that did happen on SmackDown. But um, we, had, we had a lot of tributes to uh, Bobby the Brain Heaton, which was sad news that went on over the weekend, last weekend. Uh, with the passing of Bobby Brainheen, one of the greatest managers and greatest commentators in WWE history. Um, so that was sad, but we got a, a good tribute this week, and I, we, we just actually watched them on the network not too long ago. Um, uh, so they had that going on on Raw. We had another promo for Asuka. Um, then we had like this weird, 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 absolutely... I, I, can't, I don't even know what to say about it. To be honest, I mean, I don't know how Bailey gets in 
gets put into this this quickly. That's coming from a Bailey fan. And that's coming from a Bailey fan. So we had uh, Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax, and Sasha Banks came out to like basically push Alexa back into the ring because she was trying to run away, and then uh, Bailey ends up coming out, and I'm like, in her hometown of Wait San Jose, what? So she's just good to go, I guess. And we found out later in the night she gets in, just inputted into the the match. It's not like she even asked to be there or came on the mic after and said, I want to be in the match. She just kind of appeared in it. What the fuck? What, what has Bailey done to get instant title match? I guess they're going off the fact that she had the title shot at SummerSlam before she got hurt. I guess, but like this is this coming from like a Bailey fan. I don't agree with this whatsoever. I thought it was big enough with the Fatal 4-Way. Now you're just like, come on, now you're overdoing it. They, WWE just loves their Fatal 5-Ways. They got like an infatuation with Fatal 5-Ways lately. Like the Universal title one they had? Yeah, it's like, oh, we gotta we gotta push the stamp on Fatal 5-Ways, make it a, a well-known thing. Gotta put every single goddamn match in a Fatal 5-Way. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I bet you'll have a fucking WWE Network exclusive pay-per-view Fatal 5-Way. Every match will be in a Fatal 5-Way. <laughs> just like that horrible Fatal 4-Way pay-per-view. Good name. Good meaning, but they, they did a bad job of booking it. <laughs> Awful. Um, but yeah, uh, so when that happened on Raw, I mean, I was on. I was happy to see Bailey back, but to put in instantly in the. She doesn't need to be in that title match. Why couldn't she have just come back after No Mercy? Yeah, or at No Mercy, like make a statement or something. I don't know. That was just terrible way to bring her back, yeah. like like out of nowhere in a stupid, pointless match. Uh, they, I mean, we opened Raw, and we'll move on from that. We opened Raw with The Miz and Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle. Some cringe-ass segment I really don't care. I mean, I'm glad that they're furthering this Kurt Angle and uh, Jason Jordan. I think they're, it almost looks like they're trying, at least. We're they not did getting, nothing for like a month with it. Yeah, we, we actually got nothing for a month. But now that it looks like they're kind of trying, maybe they got some better ideas, which should have been present like a month ago. To me now, it's just like, eh, I don't really care about it anymore. And Kurt Angle books this uh, this uh, six pack challenge to for for number Raw one contendership. Yeah, for number one contendership for the IC title. So at least we're getting the Intercontinental Championship defended at pay per view, unlike what we got at SummerSlam. So we're yeah, gonna get defend no mercy. Now I know you were like confused and pissed off about why <sighs> oh, Bo Dallas me. and Curtis Axel were in this match. Yeah, that's okay. So Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel were in it for one. Then the Hardy Boys were in it as well. And I'm guessing that this is probably where Jeff Hardy hurt his shoulder because I heard he's hurt now and he's probably going to need surgery. So he's going to be out and Matt Hardy is going to be left single. I yeah. mean, how are we finally going to get the <laughs> wonderful transformation? <laughs> I hope that's what it means. Um, Michael Chelsea, maybe the original plans were for SummerSlam were for Billy to win the title. Maybe they want to get it back on track. I hope right. not, because then you're just you're just hot potatoing the bell even more. Now it's like you got to scrap that and start something new, man. You got to literally put that in the pad. You can't yeah. keep hot. Why are they going the back to the well again? It's stupid. You need to you need to think something different. To me, I I you you push Sasha and Bailey after this, but you don't want them to win the title. So I don't know. It, it's tough to do. It's tough to see what they do from here because now what? You're looking. If you look into the future now, Rod doesn't have another pay per view until after Survivor <laughs> Series, right? There's no other pay-per-view in October for Raw because uh, uh, Hell in the Cell is October and then Survivor Series is in November. So you're looking at it as a, you're looking at it like, okay, so the next pay-per-view is Survivor Series. You can't build if you're not going to do anything Survivor Series related with the women, then you got to start something else because right now Sasha and Bailey, if they're going to go forward with their current plans, they're going to be put into that uh, horsewoman kind of tag match. So there you go, off the bat, off Rob, Bailey, and Sasha are scrapped. So what are you left with? I think with? they're going to continue the Nia and Alexa feud, one on one for a whole month. Probably because they haven't had a one on one. A month and a half, yet. man. Like Survivor Series, like middle of November. That's a long time. I mean, I'll get into my prediction later, but I still think it's going to continue that feud because they really haven't had a one on one match yet. I mean, I guess they could do because since they have this long till Survivor Series, they could actually do. A couple more feuds and then start another feud after that. Like they can do a feud for a month now after No Mercy, and then then you can start the uh, Four Horsewomen feud because then you maybe you can have Bailey and Sasha go at it. Because Michael Shaw even saying that in the rate the ratings are so bad they are they're rushing all the Mania matches, which probably means Bailey versus Sasha soon. Now, yeah, there's no excuse to rush matches just to get the ratings like up. Reigns like, and Cena. Like why is that happening already? And Strowman under. Uh... Brock Lesnar. Lesnar. Both those matches should have been at WrestleMania next year. 
Um, but anyways. Uh, oh, we get into uh, – or sorry, we forgot to say that Jason Jordan won that fatal Yeah, so fight, Jason uh, Jordan won that fatal – challenge or whatever. So he's going to face the mids. I got this cringe feeling that Jason Jordan's going to win the icy title. It's just going to re- ruin all prestige to that title Miz because he doesn't deserve it. He does because he's the he's their greatest intercontinental champion right now. Right, I know they don't really use him properly, but this guy's like the best, one of the best heels on Raw right now. <laughs> he's probably the best heel in the company, in my opinion. Uh, I'd argue. No, uh, Kevin, Kev- Owens, Kevin Owens has been brutal lately. Okay, so yeah, Kevin Owens has been yes, yeah. savage lately. But Miz, he doesn't need to lose the title. He needs to hold on to it. He needs to be yeah. the longest reigning intercontinental champion. So Jason Jordan's going to face him. No mercy. We'll get into that in the predictions later. Um, next, we got uh, Mark's favorite, not wrestler, Enzo Amore, about to come out. I don't care. I don't care anymore. They've ruined Enzo. They're just literally doing shit to bury his ass. He gets demolished by Braun Strowman this week. Just absolutely destroyed. This, is, this has to be... Ploys to get back at Enzo for all his backstage heat because every week his guy's just getting trashed, and he's just made to look like an idiot. Like who who actually cares about Enzo Amore? If he beats Neville on Sunday, this is gonna be the big done. Joke. I'm done watching 205 Live for good. If Enzo wins on Sunday, I'm I'm done. Seriously, don't care about 205 Live anymore, and it's sad. Why would the fuck would you have Enzo Amore win on Sunday? It would make no sense. Out of anything they've ever done, it would make zero sense. No mercy is in the Mrs. Town of L.A., apparently, Michael Chow says. <laughs> Jason Jordan wins heel crowd reaction. Oh, fuck. I hope not. Um, yeah, so he got attacked by Braun for, like, no reason. Yeah, he just gets demolished by and, Braun Strowman. And so Braun Strowman beating down Enzo is really going to put him over to beat Lesnar. Like, it's How like, does that make sense? It's like, yeah, you, but Enzo's the new Sin Cara of Monday Night Raw, man. You beat Enzo, like, you're instantly credible. And Michael Cole was billing it that way. He's like, <laughs> Braun Strowman making a statement. Making a statement against Enzo Amore? The guy who's lost every match? So the Big Show Steel Cage match wasn't a fucking statement at all, right? Him beating Enzo over that is definitely a statement. Okay. My bad, Michael Cole. That was one of the worst parts of Raw. So stupid. (laughs) Unbelievable. I can't believe they actually said that. Like, Braun goes backstage, man, I beat down Enzo. Like... Who, who's going to be like, wow, man, like you're definitely going to beat Lesnar on Sunday. Lesnar's now. pissing his pants right now for sure. <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, Roman had a shoot promo and actually was waiting for Cena, but I guess Cena was, wasn't there a lot on, on this week. We couldn't see John Cena this week. And uh, he delivered a, uh, and even Dirty.com or Dirty YouTube page puts it, a deliver a parting shoot to the movie star. I mean, it wasn't as good as any of Cena's promos against you, Roman. You kind of just, like, did what anyone else would do and compare him to The Rock. So, I mean... They, they did show the flashback to 2012 when Cena was yeah. saying that the, about The Rock. I mean, he was right. Yeah. But it was kind of funny that Cena said all that, and now he's kind of doing the same thing. And that's what Roman's basing off of. And now he's saying, oh, you know, you're going to be facing another Samoan yeah. on Sunday. Like, okay, Roman. Awesome, man. It's stupid. Braun defeating, or not, no, sorry, uh, I'm getting off crappy here because I'm reading the chat, but yeah, uh, that match, you know what, Cena's going to win this match, Golden Shovel's still out. I don't think there's any way in hell Cena's winning this match after he's just destroyed Reigns the whole feud. You think so? Yeah. I think he's, he can't let Cena win, like, no way Reigns loses to John Cena. Uh, I got this funny feeling that Cena's going to win still. (laughs) And he's just still gonna, like, I mean, that would be great. I'd love it, but I just don't see Vince letting his boy lose. Nah, he's let him lose so far. He hasn't won a match since WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, but he only wins the big matches. Yeah, you know, the big matches. He's the big dog. Yeah. Um, there's some kind of tag team implosion. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened there, man. It's just the tag team division on Raw is god awful without the revival. It's just absolutely trash. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Just, I want to point out that I, I was on the network last night and I just happened to turn it on and main event was on, and Dash Wilder was in a match against fucking Heath Slater <laughs> and he lost clean. I guess he doesn't get, so he doesn't get any like ring rust. So they have Dash Wilder, one half of the probably the best tag team in WWE, lose straight up to Heath Slater. <laughs> That's sad. Come on, just because his tag team partner's hurt, you have to bury his ass on main event. How fair is that? How do you lose the Heath Slater on a neck break? Oh my fucking god! I, I, it was, it was, it made me sick watching that. But anyway, that was I just put that in with the tag team <laughs> thing. 
Uh, speaking of horrendous, Apollo Crews faced Kurt Hawkins for whatever reason. I guess wow. That, I guess that adds with losing streak. Yeah, Kurt Hawkins is really going off a storyline off his losing streak now. So like 112 matches now. I think, man, I get this weird feeling that it's going to last till Mania, and he's actually going to win a match at WrestleMania, and the crowd's going to go freaking ballistic. And it's like, going to be against, like, a heel, like a, a serious heel. I feel like he's actually going to get over, like, over with for this losing. crap by yeah. losing. <laughs> I, get I mean, this they kind of did feeling. that with Heath Slater and the whole free agent thing last year, so. Yeah, yeah. But it's, oh, my God. Poor Dash, why can't you just boost their feud with the Hardys? Well, Cuba Girl, if you haven't heard, uh, I don't know how much we're going to get out of it, but Jeff Hardy's hurt now, so... I don't know what's going on with Matt Hardy. I hope they do finally do some Awoken nonsense with – or nonsense, some Awoken stuff with it. We'll see what happens. Um, so Ambrose and – speaking of the tag teams, Ambrose and Rollins ended up facing Cesaro and Sheamus and facing the club in an impromptu tag team match. And then, honestly, I don't care. It was a good match. I mean, I'm like, this should have been at, at the pay-per-view. Like, why did we get the pay-per-view quality match a week before the actual pay-per-view? Then when we're going to get to the pay-per-view, we're going to get a shit quality match. Why are we getting Cesaro and Sheamus again? Why can't the club face the Hardys? That's, or, or you mean um, Ambrose and Rollins? Rollins yeah. and uh, No, Ambrose. so we're getting it's Cesaro and Sheamus versus Ambrose and Rollins again. at the pay-per-view. Again. I don't care. I honestly do not care. Sure. It doesn't get me excited about the same match again. It's like watching paint dry. I don't I th- care. I thought, we thought Sheamus was supposed to be leaving for Actually, his I think, movie. I think paint drying is more well, exciting than this match. But what match. was the point of them losing the title? I thought Sheamus was leaving to, to film a movie. Is he leaving after this match? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. I, I That's what I read back in a couple months ago. I guess maybe he got scrapped because maybe they realized how much of a terrible actor he is. We want Sheamus! We want Sheamus! And we're going to move on from Sheamus. Yeah. Um... My, they had a uh, okay. So you want to hype up Brock Lesnar and oh my God. and Braun Strowman? Uh, so they have a backstage interview a week before their fucking match. Are you? This is like the worst built match ever. I know people are excited for it, but this is actually the worst built match out of the entire card. They've had. I think they've gotten in physical once, and they know WWE classic. We want to save the physicality for the actual match on the pay per view. No, they okay. love to do that. Michael Chell and, wanted to clarify: Sheamus and Cesaro was their rematch. This is the rematch clause from SummerSlam. Great, the Sorry. good old rematch. I yeah. want that rematch clause just thrown out the damn window. I hate yeah. that because we have to see matches twice that we need only needed to see once. Yeah. And can yeah. I just say about this promo? Did this not bring back flashbacks of that atrocious Brock Lesnar <laughs> oh in front God. of the camera Where promo? Where he's just like he parks himself right in front of the camera just looking at it from side to side while Paul Heyman <laughs> It's talking in the back and trying to poke his head through to look at the camera. I remember that you said that that was one of the like the, the most cringiest things you've ever seen on Raw. Like the fact that you were just staring at the camera, like hmm, hmm. and he did that again. This he did week. it again right at the end, like right before he said Suplex City, bitch. I'm like, oh my god, are we gonna get it again? <laughs> it's uh, this. Pro- I don't get hype for this type of match, and he just give me a backstage interview. Why not have one of them in, go try to run into the other room exactly. and try to attack them? Like, where were these two rooms? Why were like, This is your main title feud! <laughs> Why the fuck are you not building it? I would have loved to see Braun go after Brock in, in, into the other room where he was being yeah. feud. Yeah. But they they just decided that the Suplex City bitch was the last thing that we needed to hear from this feud going into the bad match. Yeah, I hope that, I, that doesn't happen, Cuba Girl. She says, they better not screw Braun this match. I heard they want Brock to win by DQ. I hope not. Uh, I I would like that if Braun wins the title at Survivor Series. Mm. That's the only reason I would like it. Because mm. I want Braun to win the title at a big four pay-per-view. Okay. So um, that was... What else happened on Raw? We had a pointless cruiserweight match. Don't care. No. Typical and, tag uh, team match. Okay, so it's not Gold Dust anymore. It's Dustin Rhodes. So we did we just scrap this whole heel Gold Dust vintage Gold Dust? Yeah, because that's what the plans were, and now we're just like he's he wants to be serious. Dustin Rhodes. Is this like a, a beginning of a stage because of Starcade coming up in a couple months, and there's rumors of Cody Rhodes coming back to have a match with him, and are they even got the Rhodes brothers or the Rhodes family? I guess Wait, isn't aren't they brothers? They're brothers, right? Yeah, yeah the Rhodes brothers. But I don't know he was serious and went to face Bray Wyatt, gets buried. He begged Kurt Angle for the match, not as a, as Goldust, as a man and a friend, Dustin. <laughs> oh, Dustin. And he even got announced as Dustin Rhodes from Austin, Texas, when he came out. No face paint. It was weird. Yeah, and he, but he's in the Goldust suit, but it's zipped down halfway. <laughs> what the hell? He just acted like Dustin Rhodes. All I think about when I hear Dustin Rhodes is like TNA Dustin Rhodes, like that. 
He when he looked terrible back then, man. Like he looked like he was going through some rough patches. <laughs> yeah, he looks great now. Yeah, but like holy crap, just I don't know. I don't know what the hell this was. And Finn Balor came on the Titan Tron and cut a promo on Bray Wyatt. So basically, sure. Goldust is just the filler for Bray Wyatt to have be credible to face Finn Balor. I guess, and Finn Balor saying like, who was more dangerous, the demon or the man who created the demon? I just don't care about this match again. What if Dustin Rhodes helps Bray Wyatt beat the human Balor? I don't see that happening. What, Bray Wyatt is this the creation? Maybe maybe Goldust is the manager of Bray Wyatt? That'd be so weird. That'd be uh, the oddest thing I've ever I seen in my entire think life. That. that sounds horrific. <laughs> but anyway, that was raw. Nah. Wow. We'll move on to SmackDown. SmackDown was like controversial as shit because of one uh, segment this week. And that was from the worst WWE champion in the in history. And it was so bad and so controversial that it's not even posted on the WWE YouTube page. Is That's a first because usually they post everything. Apparently they released a statement about it. I don't know. I, I don't really want to talk about it because it's, uh, racism is stupid. It shouldn't be, uh, especially in a company like WWE, uh, there's no excuse for having stuff like that. You should know better. So there's no excuse for WWE. The to best even... was when Jinder said he didn't think there was anything wrong with it. Like... Th- Derby has no excuse. They can't come out here with a statement and give me a statement. That you shouldn't be given a statement. You just the statement should probably read: "We fucked up. <laughs> we we put the title on a horrendous superstar who doesn't care about being racist. Yeah, that's our bad." And we had him and the Singh brothers making fun of Shinsuke's face again. Yeah, there should be no. It, it was the same exact segment from last week. It was literally the fucking same, but they put more racism into this one. It's so, like oh, it, it went last week, and they're like, oh. They looked at that, that promo and he was like, shit, that was boring, man. We, we didn't get no reaction. Here, let's try it again this week, but let's put some edge into it. Let's put some racism. Yeah, that's a good fucking idea. Let's put racism into it. Look what so, it did. The crowd chanted too far. This is too far. They chanted that. I've never heard that before. That's a first again. Yeah, WWE wants to talk about first time. There you go, first ever. And they were just in Japan for a live tour. Um, Holy so fuck. if this isn't clarifi- clarification that gender does not need to be the champion, there you go. Right there. That segment should be the end of his reign. He is the worst WWE champion ever. To the people out there that want to agree with gender as a good WWE champion, please rethink your – please just rethink that. What does he actually do to make the WWE championship anywhere credible? All his matches are god-awful. He cannot wrestle. He's terrible on the mic. He's You can't hear a word he's fucking saying. You have to physically turn your TV up to a 100. Just even hear one peep out of the guy. He's got no charisma. His charisma is, like, terrible. He's got as much charisma as a box. Which is absolutely none. It's terrible. It's terrible. I hate. I can't believe Jinder Mahal is still WWE champion. And there's rumors of him carrying this belt until WrestleMania. You're just losing all prestige in that WWE champion. This is your top title in your fucking company, and it's around this guy. There's no reaction from the crowd. People saying, "Oh, he's getting heel heat." No, he's not. They're not even booing him. They're just they sitting there. Care. They don't care because he's boring. When you when you know someone's bad, when you don't even get heel reaction, they just get. Can we get crickets for Jinder Mahal? Yeah, here, I'm going to play the crickets now. Hang on, give me a sec. This is what we get for Jinder Mahal, right here. That's what you hear when Jinder Mahal speaks in the mic and, and runs these god-awful promos that are the same thing two weeks in a row. I also think crickets are louder than Jinder Mahal talking on the mic. You have to put your TV up to 100 to hear him talk. It's terrible. It's terrible. Exactly, Michael Child. Jinder is not a good champion to a point where creative has to come up with racist garbage to try to make him feel... <laughs> or try to make him heal, sorry. It's terrible. This guy sh- should lose the title to Shinsuke Nakamura at Hell in a Cell. And he, I don't even want Shinsuke winning the title yet, but at this rate, yeah. it needs to be on him instead of Jinder. I can't go along. they jumped and, the and, gun and, with Nakamura being in the title picture that should have waited until Royal Rumble. It, it's terrible, man. You're, you, Dirty B got so much flack for that. Like, they have to do something now. You think that they did, okay, we have to actually take the t- title off him. So the, the, they, they got to scrap this whole indie idea, man. Like you said, they don't care about Jinder Mahal. They care about Roman Reigns and John Cena. They're no, I don't. I've never heard an Indian guy. You know what? Next time I I I, I listen, if I get, I'm walking somewhere and I hear an Indian guy talking about RB, I'm gonna actually ask him, "Do you like Jinder Mahal?" 
Like, seriously, give me a serious answer. Do you like Jinder Mahal? And if they say no, like, point and case. I know I've only asked one out of four or 1.3 billion. You should have a poll for the yeah. Indian fe- Indian fellows out there. I sh- again, like what Michael Chow just said, Nakamura hasn't come out in two weeks for that. That's another poll. So the two main title feuds on both shows are, like, the worst built feuds out of any of them. That's sad. Are, do they not sit back there in creative and say, fuck, what the hell are we doing, guys? Both our main titles suck right now. We're, we're, we're building pointless feuds for them. Like, maybe, how do they sit there and agree that this is good television? Maybe they should realize that the SmackDown main title has the wrong people in it. Like, Shinsuke can be in it, but he has to have a certain type of person that can talk yeah. and carry the, the mic skills of it. Jinder's not that guy. No. So we're just becoming the most boring feud since Jinder and Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. So we've had two horrendous WWE title feuds back-to-back, and it's because Jinder's been involved in both of them. Hmm. I wonder what that means. It means Stupid. gender shouldn't be in it at And the moment. fact that they, they don't have Nakamura come out and, like, do anything about it just makes him look weak. He's there on SmackDown, but he's, he didn't come out, really? Oh, he's... I don't even Stupid. know. I can't even think, think of something that he's We'll doing. move on. Shane opened up SmackDown promising to take Kevin to, to hell. It's typical, like... McMahon family. McMahon family written promo. It really did nothing. Sure, I'm hyped for it, but... I thought Kevin Owens would at least come out, but he, we had like a him uh, like a backstage interview thing, which is good. He, satellite. he did cut a good promo on it, I'll admit. But I would rather have these guys in the ring together to at least. You, you, I hate how they build feuds with the the people away from each other. WWE loves to do that. They love to wait for the physicality for the pay per view match. I I can't. I to me uh, to me I, my opinion. I don't like that. Well, Other especially people like after there what might happened like that. last week. Like last week was like holy shit, and then this week just kind of like yeah, it just kind of like took a step back. You know, Michael Chow, fuck it, bring the great Kali. There pushed me to this. No, absolutely no. not. Um, but yeah, the <laughs> feud. I love what Kevin Owens said at the end, where he said, "People like me don't go to hell for what we do to you. We go to heaven." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Orton ended up facing Aiden English in like a, the most pointless match I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm like, what does this do for anything? No, the worst was after that match. So he, he squashes Aiden English. Yeah. And then Rusev comes out and demands a match against Randy Orton. Or actually, he doesn't even do. He just came out. And he just told the ref to ring the bell, and the ref just rings the bell without even, like, any clarification yeah. of the fact that this is actually a real match that's happening. Rusev's like, ring the bell. He's like, okay, ring the bell. Turns around into a kick. Boom. Rusev beats Randy Orton in, like, three seconds. It's a redemption from Star... Oh, my God. This so, was... these guys have had two matches that have lasted ten seconds total. This is so lazy. This is just, like, definition of laziness by Derby. And then Rusev runs backstage, and he's, like, celebrating, like, the biggest accomplishment of his career. <laughs> defeating Randy Orton in three seconds in a impromptu match that just kind of happened. This is god-awful. <laughs> so Speaking I'm... of worst feuds. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So now we're probably going to get Rusev and Randy Orton part three at Hell in a Cell. And that's going to be 15 seconds long. <laughs> They're each going to hit a finisher on each other, and whoever gets the pin first wins. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Talk about another guy needs to get the fuck off my TV is Randy Orton. Yeah. Him and Jinder should just, like, be banished somewhere. <laughs> Go tucked away for a bit. <laughs> just get them off of TV for a while. Uh, SmackDown was fucking garbage, too. Yeah, it was. It was bad. Then we had uh, the New Day facing the Hype Bros and hype, more dissension with the Hype Bros. Just a New Day squash match, man. It was really nothing. Uh, Natalia had this cringe segment with Charlotte in the ring showing a picture of herself holding the title. Cool. Charlotte pronouncing that she's back. Yeah, there's a Fatal 4-Way match. Winner challenges Smack for the SmackDown title, and Charlotte ends up winning. What did I that. tell you? I told you Charlotte was gonna win. I know. I thought it was gonna be Tamina, but I honestly didn't. I wasn't accounting for Charlotte to be back in wrestling yet. I thought she's just gonna be back and make an appearance. So whatever. Charlotte won. It was a good match. I'm it was glad actually really, Charlotte's really decent back match. In the title picture because she's actually a credible woman, and like you know, Natty's just terrible, and yeah. Naomi to me. She's got a good gimmick, but to me, she's not top women material on SmackDown. Like, Charlotte and Becky should be the top women on SmackDown. Yeah. Until we heard the rumors of your girl Paige might be coming to SmackDown. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for that. They already have a, they actually have a storyline in place for Paige to return to SmackDown, so Matt, I am pumped Maybe we'll bring Team PCB back. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> um, 
The women's match was actually really good. I actually enjoyed that, and uh, they put on a good match, and then Charlotte winning the main that. Event, so good yeah. on them for the main event. Uh, we had a U.S. title match also on SmackDown. Styles first uh, Baron Corbin, and I was p- crossing my fingers for Dillinger to come out and at least attack Corbin. And he did, um, and Cor- basically cost Corbin the match with his uh, that that leg. He was really nursing the leg. Corbin was did a really good job at selling that leg injury this week. That guy did. He, he's actually decent at selling. You can just tell from this week. He's not legit. It made you think it was legit, yeah. but so Corbin did a really, really excellent job at selling it. And I'm guessing this is all signs are pointing towards a triple threat match now. That's if Dillinger was not match. going to be on TV this week, which would have made me so pissed off, and it, if he didn't show up, it would have been singles. But now it's making me think they're going to do a triple threat, and that's going to be actually pretty awesome at uh, Hell in a Cell if they go in that direction. That, that's going to be a sick match if they actually let it happen for like a 15, 20-minute match. That's going to be an yeah. awesome match. But yeah, Corbin sold the injury and Styles just won because Corbin couldn't compete. Mm-hmm. Just makes me think. I just, I'm just I'm just happy that they're actually using Ty Dillinger. Our boy from our hometown is finally getting a shot, man, and he's getting put in a feud. We're seeing him on a weekly basis, and we haven't seen Ty Dillinger a week. They're, maybe they're finally seeing the light in the dollar signs in Ty Dillinger and how over this guy gets over in shitty like 2,000 seat arena crowds. I mean, it's, I know there's more than 2,000 people there, but from the pictures I've seen of SmackDown Live the last two weeks of how they, they blocked out half the arena. The, the hard I mean, camera side's completely yeah, blocked Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes me think there's only 2,000 people in there. But if he gets over in those types of cities, you know you got something with Ty Dillinger. You know that when they go to the bigger cities, he'll get even more over. You're not going to get crickets when you get Ty Dillinger, okay? Um, what was I going to say? And I just want them to have, like, an actual, like, long match with him, like, he hasn't really had, like, a 10, 15-minute match yet. And he can. We've seen that from him. Bobby Roode at NXT TakeOver Toronto. The opening match. That was, like, 12, 13 minutes long. And that was a great match. And with Bobby Roode, they could reignite that feud again on, on SmackDown Live. Both these guys are on SmackDown. Speaking of Bobby Roode, where the fuck is he at? Is he, oh, my God, we got the, the Dolph Ziggler thing again. Oh, yeah. Oh. I think that's what that's leading to. And it was in my How to Book Hell in a Cell I think this is going to lead to either before or at Hell in a Cell. It's going to be Dolph Ziggler versus... I got a feeling it's going to be now before Hell in a Cell. Bobby Roode's going to interrupt Dolph Ziggler, and then they're going to start their feud, and we're actually going to get a match at Hell in a Cell, which I'm pumped for. That's Dolph Ziggler... Really good, really good feud. Bol, Dolph Ziggler versus Bobby Roode is going to be a, a, a great first feud for Bobby Roode. And it's actually going to... It, if they, they let them, they can actually put on a good 10-minute match at the pay-per-view. Although they're trying to make Ziggler look strong, and he hasn't faced anybody. No. Why just, isn't he beating people? Like he's just doing these like terrible. He comes out like, again. Who did he come out as this week? I don't even remember. He's like uh, D. He, well, he did Triple H and Shawn Michaels, DX. and then he did DX, and I don't terrible. know. It, 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 it's weird. Uh, like, Cuban Girl's actually saying Bobby is apparently rumored to be Kevin Owens' next opponent after on the South. Mm, so maybe, well, maybe crazy. maybe Bobby has his match with uh, Ziggler. At Hell in a Cell, and then after Hell in a Cell, it's Owens versus Rude. That'd be sick. That would be odd. Like, SmackDown has such a good roster that they don't have an excuse to put on crappy television. Yeah. Like, Bobby Rude's not on TV again this week. I know. I think it's, he's still doing his farewell tour. That's probably why. I think it's done now, but I don't know what the hell they're doing with it. Where's Sami Zayn? Well, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't Everybody even on SmackDown this him. week. Where the hell is or he? Or Mike Kanellis. I know it sucks. They're only two hours. Well, you, you can't even say SmackDown's two hours. When you count for all the commercials, it's like barely an hour. Oh my God. What is with SmackDown and their commercials? Like, they have like a 10 minute match and eight minutes of its commercial. It's terrible. They come back to the finish. <laughs> but, um, um, just no hype for me at all for SmackDown yeah. this week or Raw for that yeah. matter. That's why NXT was short, but it was great this week. You had Lars uh, Sullivan, who's. Slowly becoming like this beast in NXT. He destroyed No Way Jose this week. You had Alistair Black speak for the first time, which is interesting. And then Velveteen Dream. That's an interesting feud right there. Uh, Velveteen Dream and Alistair Black. And then you had probably a, a probably one of the greatest tag team matches I've seen in a long time on NXT. Probably, I mean, it doesn't go up there with uh, Gargano and Champa and the Revival. But it was really, really good. It was Tyler Bate and Trent Seven versus Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. That was a sick match. I guess they're new, the the new uh, undisputed era uh, formation. So it was good. It was good. I love when they include the UK guys. Uh, it's always a good time. Uh, but it was a really good match. And then we had uh, Adam Cole. Uh, 
They had actually had those three turn around into the Sanity who were like right behind him near the curtain. That was because Drew McIntyre came yeah, out. Drew Mac- oh, yeah, Drew McIntyre. Oh yeah, Drew McIntyre came out. That's right too. So then they Sanity beat down on uh, Undisputed. That's that's gonna be a sick match once they uh, once they uh, actually have that. It's probably gonna be at the like, takeover. That forty five minutes of NXT was better than what five hours of main <laughs> roster television yeah. this week. <laughs> that's sad. Uh, yeah, the NXT ending makes me want to tune in next week. Michael Chow says, don't remember the last time Raw or SmackDown made me want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, and then Cupid Girl saying the, the promo between uh, Valveteen and Alistair was awesome. That was great. I would love for us to just in-depthly review NXT instead of fucking Raw and <laughs> SmackDown. SmackDown. Every week. It sucks, man. I wish <laughs> I wish we could. I don't know. We <laughs> Maybe we should run like a poll. <laughs> Who would you guys rather us do? Go over Raw or SmackDown? Or I mean, it's... in depth review on NXT. <laughs> Raw or SmackDown just makes us stress every goddamn week. <laughs> it's like I don't even want to watch it half the time, but I do it. We do it for the podcast. We do it yeah. for you guys, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, for not for you guys, but the fact that we have to sit through this crap and you guys do too. Like, it's just like, wh- why am I watching this sometimes? Right. Um. Oh, yeah, what we do for you guys too is uh, predictions. Yeah. Very, very good predictions. Um, and we'll get to that with uh, no mercy. We'll start right now. Start. So that was Ron Smackdown this week and a bit of NXT. And uh, we'll go over the predictions and we'll give our thoughts. And uh, you guys that are in the chat right now on Spreaker, give us your thoughts between uh, – or tell us who you're going to win. Do whatever. When we uh, talk about the certain match, tell us what, uh, who you think you're going to win. And I'll, I'll go over them at the end after our predictions for it. Um so we'll start with the pre-show. Just announced. It was today. just announced the pre-show today. Elias Sampson or Elias will face Apollo Crews in the <laughs> pre-show. What the it's hell? It's like is the Aiden point English. Of this was, match? It's like it was like it's pre-show. It's like it's like where they 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 showcase their lazy bookings when they can actually make the pre-show interesting and and, and do some good things with a the few pre-show. that actually matters. Yeah, but nope. now we get Elias versus Apollo. Oh, Cruz. yeah, because they've been feuding for four weeks now. You know, <laughs> they they've had a great feud leading up to this pay-per-view. <laughs> it could be a good match. I mean, both these guys are good, but it's obviously going to be pre-show quality because they don't do anything really with the pre-show. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, roulette creative, Michael Chow says. We'll just put, we'll just put fucking a, a wheel and just spin it. Okay, who's going to be on the pre-show? Okay, Apollo. Okay, we'll spin it again. You're going to face Elias. Sure. Yeah, there you go. Elias. All right, guys, get in the pre-show and, uh, I don't know, do something. Sure, Apollo, you want to win? And uh, we're going to give it to Elias this week. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I, pick Elias. I think Elias is gonna win. I'm picking Elias too. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he can lose yet. Like he no. still really hasn't no. lost like a one on one match. Yet. He's gaining momentum. Uh, the crowd really loves when he does this. Who wants clean. to walk with Elias? Yeah, I don't think he's lost clean yet. I think he might have lost by a distraction or something. But, yeah. Um, he's he needs a good. He this guy needs to be pushed. Good heel. I, good mid card heel. Yeah. I I hope they find something for him. Paulo Cruz. It is what it is. He's with the Titus brand. I don't know what the hell they're else doing with that. I don't think it's ever going to get over now. I mean, they, they, they've been stringing like, along too long. What happened long. with Tazawa in the Titus brand? We haven't heard from him in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Tazawa, he went back to 205 Live. They gotta, maybe they dropped him from the Titus brand, but they didn't really show us that. Um, yeah, he says, uh, Cuba Girl says, Matt Hardy has nothing to do. Maybe we get the, the Woken stuff in the pre-show, maybe. When we get that. We usually only get like one thing because the panel's got to talk for 40 minutes. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe this Elias and Apollo match will be like three minutes long. <laughs> Maybe Matt Hardy will come on the, 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 the panel. Pre- yeah, the panel will do something. Like, yeah, that's right. Hey, um, you look wonderful today. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fantastic. Um, so we'll go yeah. over the Cruiserweight title. Did anybody say anything for the... Uh, Elias, Michael Chow says Elias. Cooper Girl says Elias. So everyone's in the greens with Elias uh, has to win this match. Great. Um, Neville versus... En- <laughs> Neville versus Enzo. God damn this match for the cruiserweight championship. I feel bad for Neville having to sink to this level. I do too. He has this to is not the Enzo. Neville level. Neville level. <laughs> this is not the Neville level. Enzo is, is not a cruiserweight. Level. This guy can barely jump around. This is gonna be a really stiff ass match. It's basically gonna be like Enzo catching up to Neville this entire match. The only or time ne- Enzo did a top rope move is when Cast t- threw him off of the rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm not. I'm. I'm not seeing this match being anywhere close to good. Like, I think I Neville's, feel like Neville's gonna try to carry this match. It's gonna yeah, be bad. I think ne- I get this feeling Neville's just gonna dominate. Like, Enzo's just gonna get his ass whooped, and then Neville's gonna win in like four minutes. If Neville loses the title, this is a slap in the face to all the cruiserweight division people. Literally, 
Enzo Amore, how, how do you give that guy a title after what he's been doing backstage? I highly doubt they're going to give him the title. Not so. even that. Look what he, he got squashed when he was on the main so roster. To me, this is a months. waste of a feud. This is a waste. Why the hell does Enzo Amore need to face Neville for the Cruiserweight title at a pay-per-view? And why does Enzo get instant title Why shots? does he deserve a title shot over the other people on 205 Live that have been fucking working their ass off? Since the show started. But no, Enzo Amore, oh yeah, he gets a Cruiserweight title shot for sure over all of them. So stupid. Enzo pulls off the victory. I'm done watching 205 Live. So I'm picking Neville, hopefully for him to retain Obviously. the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, Cuba Girl says, uh, well, she says, I wouldn't be surprised if Enzo tries to pull or gets the, the victory. Um, <sighs> Knowing WWE creative, I'm not putting it past him, but fuck, it'll be awful. Yeah. So I'm going with Neville. Corporate Cav is going Neville. And uh, we'll move on to the next match. And that is The Miz versus Jason Jordan for the Intercontinental Championship. Miz has got to retain. If Jason Jordan wins the Intercontinental, I really don't think that's a good idea. He'll just get booed. Yeah. And uh, with the last match, Michael Schaus is Neville to win. Have Finn Balor feud with Neville after. This will bring ratings back to 205 Live. Balor will be like Cena bringing lower title giving a lower title a push. I that... mean, I, Finn Balor deserves to be in the main title, but if they're not going to put him there and he's just going to be in pointless feuds with nobody, then yeah. I put him on there for now and then move him back. That, is a, that would give 205 a big ratings booster, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't think it would... A lot of people would probably say it would bury Finn Balor and it would people make people forget about him. But I think it would bring, like... More intensity. But if you put him and Neville, they could elevate. Yeah, they could. And you, you know, you, they showcase Two Five Live on Raw, so it's not like he's not leaving Raw. Yeah. So. And it's not like they're using him in the main title right now, anyway. And then on Tuesday nights, you get people to stick and stick to Two Five Live. You get people to stay in the arena instead of having to push everyone down to the camera side. Yeah, you you need people that are over to be on that show, and that's why they put Enzo on it because he's still over with the kids. Yeah. Um, but Jason Jordan, The Miz. Uh, I'm picking The Miz, but. I got this weird feeling, too, that Jason Jordan might win the IT title and do, do something with that. I'm picking Jason Jordan by DQ. I, oh. think, Miz, I think the Miz Taraj is going to get involved. That is in the prediction Jason Cuba Jordan. Girl just said, and then he goes backstage and turns heel on Kurt Angle. I think Miz Taraj gets herself involved in this match and costs Jason Jordan the match either by DQ, and Jason Jordan wins by DQ, or they make Jason Jordan lose by distraction. I see that. I see that. I'm going to stick with my prediction. I think Miz is going to win clean. I mean, I, I would love to see that, but mm -hmm. Miz retains. Like, not sure. Maybe the Miz Rock does do something, but... Regardless, Miz retains the title. Then whatever situation happens, Miz mm -hmm. is retaining the title. So, move on. Speaking of Finn Balor. <clears throat> Finn Balor. <laughs> Finn Balor, Baylor, is facing Bray Wyatt. But he's not, not the demon Balor. He is the creator of the demon see, who thinks it's stronger. I would have cared about this match if they didn't have Bray Wyatt's, like, defeat Finn Balor in five minutes in, leading up to their yeah. Demon versus Wyatt feud at SummerSlam. They had this match on Raw the, the week before, yeah. and Balor just got lo – he lost in five minutes. So what makes me think that he's going to be doing, doing it ten times better than that match? To me, I always just thought that maybe Finn Balor should just mess with Bray Wyatt and come out as the Demon and scare the shit out of him. <laughs> And then win again with the demon. And if just Bray Wyatt's that supposed to be this god, why is he so scared of the demon? That's what I don't get. I think we went over that in the one lowdown show too. Like, it doesn't make any sense. How is Bray Wyatt scared of the demon? He says he's a god. The guy is like the new face of what's well, supposed to be the new face of fear, but yeah, he's afraid of a demon. That makes sense. You guys really know how to push a Bray Wyatt character. My Awful. God. That's why I don't care about Bray Wyatt anymore. It's because he's because of the no. fucking book. And I'm picking here. Finn Balor to win this match. Just seems like the only logical way to do this match. If Bray Wyatt wins here, that'd be actually shocking. I'd actually be really shocked What's if Bray Wyatt point? wins. Because then we'd have to see a third match from yeah. them again. <laughs> Survivor Series. So hopefully that does not happen. Finn Balor wins. It would be like on. half painted and half human. <laughs> the match Survivor Series is going to be like half demon painted and half Finn. He's going to have wear like half a jacket. He's going to wear the one sleeve. I don't even want to think about it. It's awful. <laughs> May Hopefully Bray Wyatt moves on to something else after this. Oh, God. I hope so. And I hope it's good. Maybe him and Cena again? No. Oh. I don't even know if Cena's going to be around. Mr. Movie Star. Oh, yeah. No one reigns my Hollywood. penis ass. <laughs> um, Rollins and Ambrose versus Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Uh, or I say Michael Chow puts Bray Wyatt wins and then Bray get off my TV. <laughs> Oof. 
Yeah, Michael Chow's not a fan of Bray Wyatt. If you listen to his podcast, Michael Chow TV, he uh very critical of Bray Wyatt. Yeah, Michael Chow TV. He has his own podcast, guys. WBMC TV. He's also on Spreaker. Go check him out. He's also on Twitter at Michael Chow TV. So go give him a follow on there as well. He does uh, an in depth review of Raw and SmackDown. That yeah. I give him credit, but I don't. I don't know how he does it every week. Because we sure as hell can't. No. <laughs> Michael Chow is definitely our wet host from the West Coast. I can't. I was thinking of trying to think of something else to rhyme with that, and I can't. It's okay. Uh, and Cuba Girl puts Finn Balor better be the new opponent for Miz. Miz and Finn Balor feud. That'd be interesting. No, right. it's going to be Roman Reigns, remember? Oh, yeah, Roman, Roman Reigns, Reigns is going to bury the shit out of the Miz and the Miz to Raj. All right. Uh, so Rollins and Ambrose versus Cesaro and Shane's Raw Tag Team titles. Who gives a flying fuck? Rollins and Ambrose are going to retain. Like, if anybody thinks that Cesaro and Sheamus are winning this match. If then... they pick Cesaro and Sheamus to retain or get the titles back here, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing in the tag team division. they just throwing shit out there. It looks good. Eh, why not? Let's do it. Let's move on. No. No, 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 no. Shame... Revival, I think, are coming back soon, too, so... Sheamus and Cesaro can just lose this match, and Sheamus can go do his movie, and Cesaro can get back in the mid card where he belongs. And we get something else because I, I'm tired of this. They did put on good matches, I'll give them that. And this week on Raw, we actually look like we got the pay per view quality match we should be getting this Sunday, but whatever. I don't it care is, about this tag team anymore. This whole we are the bar crap, I'm done with it. <laughs> so Rollins and Ambrose to win and stop this rematch clause bullshit, like Marco Child just said. And we're moving on. So we had the newly put Fatal 5-Way match. It was going to be Fatal 4-Way, but Bailey returning this week caused it to be a Fatal 5-Way. And it's Alexa Bliss versus Bailey versus Emma versus Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Jesus Women's Christ. Championship. So basically all the women in the that they actually use on the division in the same match together. So Alicia Fox, Dana Brooke, and Mickey James can have a pointless triple threat match together. As the irrelevant yeah, I guess. people on Raw. Because Dana Brooks, like, waiting around to do something. Same with Mickey James. I thought she was there to put you know put some people over. Alicia Fox, I think she's, like, home for the, the year. I think probably going to see her to 2018. I don't know what the hell's going on with Alicia Fox. Paige is coming back, but she's going over to SmackDown. So, I mean, Asuka's not even there yet. Maybe Asuka debuts finally uh, on Monday this week. I don't know. Who knows? Because they need, they need to do something after No Mercy, man. Can't just continue this crap or keep doing Alexa Bliss and Night. To me, I'm sick and tired of even seeing Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. But they I'm, haven't even I'm had like a one-on-one -on -one main match yet. I, I don't even think that's gonna be even good. Yeah, you know they gotta have it though. They had, they've had a one-on-one -on -one match, haven't they? No, they got interrupted this week. Remember, no. Alexa and Nia haven't had a clean one-on-one -on -one feud yet. <sighs> you know what's coming between the two. The two best friends. I, I don't know why. I I'm I see that as a snooze fest. I don't care about a Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss. Nia Jax is turning face now, remember? <sighs> not like most faces. So we got this match. And I'm glad it's not Sasha versus, versus Alexa again. Because yeah. I can't handle that anymore. I mean, three times is enough. So now we involve yeah. all these fucking people. We get Emma thrown in because, yeah. you know, she's been great lately. Okay, and there's, there's two th sides to this too. Like, to me, like, you could go... You don't want to have your title hot potato, but then to me, now that they've added everyone, in, it's it's almost certain that the title is going to be switching hands once again. And Alexa's probably not even going to get pinned. No, and uh, Michael, I'm going with Michael Chow's prediction. He just put in in the chat, or it could be vice versa. He said Bailey to win by pinning Sasha Banks to create the tension to start the feud between them, or vice versa. Sasha Banks pins Bailey. So. I kind of see that. No way Sasha wins the fucking title again. Like, why are we switching the title every every two weeks? Cuba Girl puts, I want Alexa to win this oh. by by Nia Samoan dropping Emma. And yep. then Sasha pushing Nia out of the ring and then insult to injury for the win. Well, insult to injury is a terrible move. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> um, but I definitely see Nia just whooping ass during the whole match. And then Alexa coming in to get the cheap. The, the cheap win after. that That's how I see this match ending. And I think Emma's taking the pin. <laughs> I got this weird feeling that your girl, Alexa, is getting pinned by Bailey. It's going to be like a distraction. She's going to throw someone out of the ring. She's going to turn around into a Bailey the belly, and that's going to be it. And then Bailey's going to pin Alexa Bliss for the title. So why did they have Alexa lose to Sasha at SummerSlam and then, and then because Sasha they don't know what they're Alexa doing. again. They don't know what they're doing. They just they, this is why you, you clearly see they don't know what they're doing because they just put everyone in the same goddamn match because they don't know what to do with the other people. They this probably should have been just Alexa Bliss and Sasha, but they're like fuck, we don't know what to do with everyone else. Let's just put them all in the match and then we'll decide when we get there. 
I would rather see an Alexa and Nia feud continue than yeah. this. Michael Chow thinks Alexa or Asuka to make an appearance after the match. That'd be sick to confront the champion. Come I out. thought she's injured. Asuka, yeah. Well, maybe she's maybe she's healed up. I don't know. There's there's no update on Asuka wait yet. Wait for Survivor Series for for Asuka. Let, let, yeah. let's, let's let's take a step back here, folks. But I mean, what else are you gonna do after this? You're gonna do Alexa and Nia. I'm calling it now. Then what? Everyone has Sasha, but you can't you can't do a Sasha Banks Bailey without a title. To me, that's just—it's not enough tension between. Maybe that. they'll face Emma the, and <laughs> I don't know. Again, see, that's what I mean. You need you need to do something because right now it's almost like they're at the end of the line, and then something's got to happen now, and it's almost like it's got to have a title change in order for something to happen. Because if you go on with Alexa retaining here, it's just going to be the same crap, and they're going to hit the dead end and go, okay, now we have nothing else, and then from there we're going to get lazy booking and pointless booking and shit that doesn't make sense. It sucks. Like, I want your girl to retain, but to me, it needs to change hands. This whole division's become a clusterfuck. Or maybe she doesn't actually necessarily need to be there. Like, Cupid Girl says in the chat here, maybe she makes an appearance on the Titan Tron and said, You are not ready for Asuka! He builds that up, and the yeah. women get scared. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how Nia's going to be scared of Asuka, though, but. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, move on. And we got Super Cena versus uh, Vince McMahon's pet dog, Roman Reigns. Yeah, not the big dog, the pet dog. The pet dog. <laughs> and, I mean, the, Cena's breaking the fourth wall like three times with this feud with great, great those, promos. Those promos have been awesome. Again, but we said it before. We'll say it once again. This should be at WrestleMania. We're going to get no mercy. We're probably actually going to get a really decent match out of this. I don't see them holding back on this match. Since they're, they're, on, they're most likely not going to have this match at WrestleMania. So, they're probably going to put everything out on the line here. And it's probably going to be a decent match. But... I'm going with my gut, man. I got to go with my sports gut and pick John Cena. I'm picking John Cena for the reason that I, I think Roman Reigns can take an L here. But I see Cena, because Cena loves to do this. After the match, shake Roman Reigns' hands. You know, you, you got it, kid. Like, take it now. Like, passing the torch, maybe. I don't know what passing the torch means that Roman has to win, but. As logical as that would be, I'm going with Vince's logic, and I'm picking his boy, the big dog. Juggy Brown, you're going to love that pick. Oh, God. But obviously, all signs in this feud have Cena just been destroying Reigns with these promos. It all leads to Reigns getting the final, you know, the, the victory in the end. I don't want it, The only reason I don't want it to happen is because I know what happens after this. He gets the momentum to go after either the IC or the Universal title after this just because he beat John Cena. Yeah, just like he beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Oh. And retired The Undertaker. Yeah. We all know uh, about that. Michael crap. Chow, Cena to win for the shock factor, but just like Cena versus The Rock, I predict Cena to win at No Mercy, and then Roman wins his rematch on another pay per view. That is a respectable opinion. Yeah. But knowing. Maybe they do that. Hey, maybe they do have this match at next year's WrestleMania. Maybe that will be when Roman Reigns, you know, maybe that maybe that's the. Maybe we're hearing the rumors wrong. Maybe the coronation, the next coronation, is Cena passing a torch to Roman, and then Roman winning at WrestleMania next year. I highly doubt that'd be for a title, and if that is, holy shit, maybe that... Can you imagine that's the IC title feud going into WrestleMania next year? Reigns versus John Cena? No way. No way Vince <laughs> lets that happen. He can't let his two golden boys from the last era and this era now... Mm, that'd be interesting. ...the IC title. <laughs> it could be. Reigns is going on to bury Miz. We all can see it coming. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, it's gonna be sad. If, ne if the Raw after No Mercy this, this Monday... And it gets a Miz in the ring and Roman comes out. I'm switching the channel. I'm not fucking watching that. <laughs> Done. Done. So I'm picking Cena. You're picking Reigns. Uh, Michael Chow picking Cena for the surprise factor. And Cuba Girl says John Cena will win, get his golden shovel, and then get and then, then gets Roman by, by the hair and then buries him good. <laughs> Damn. Believe that. Believe that. <laughs> Sorry, Juggy. Um... Cuba Rose is the Undertaker's rumor to appear at No Mercy, but it's probably not true. No, I highly doubt. If anyone has seen a recent Instagram picture of Michelle McCool, I highly doubt the Undertaker is anywhere close to ring shape. For one, it looks like he's lost like at least 20 pounds because you don't see his body, but his face just looks flushed as shit. Like it's just like narrow now, and he's got a big white chin beard, and you just you can see it on his face. He's just like holy fuck. He looks old as dirt, man. <laughs> um. But the one hashtag that Michelle McCool hashtag that picture was retired life. Mm. So I think Undertaker's done, done. 
So unless that's a ploy by them to make people think that he's retired, well, you but, know him. He's always yeah. like he's stubborn. To have he's stubborn. Match. He he's he's stubborn. He always wants to come back. It's not like WWE asks him to come back. He it's his it's Taker saying like I'm coming back to wrestle this guy. <laughs> that's what he did with Roman Reigns at this year. Trust me, I'm coming back because I'm I I don't know what Taker sees in him. Maybe he's got the same logic as Vince, but um, <laughs> Get Taker he's a stubborn main guy. Main event yeah. of the evening. Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. The most uh, crappiest built match for a pay-per-view I've ever seen. The most non-physical built match. And I'm... Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Like, I want to see Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman go at it. I can see so much hype from the crowd when these guys go face-to-face. There's just... I don't have as much hype as I should be if they were to get... Were to have been getting physical the last couple of weeks. So... They they only got physical once when Strowman came out and power slammed Rain Or Lesnar. I'm hearing rumors that Lesnar's actually going to retain and go on. I'm picking Braun Strowman because I want him to win the Universal title because I don't want Brock Lesnar to retain because we're not going to see his ass till like probably after Survivor Series. <laughs> so, I on the fact that we need the Universal title on TV more, I'm picking Braun Strowman. I think Braun Strowman can be a beast, man. Braun Strowman with the Universal title can be a huge champion. And I, I know it's going to be interesting to see what they do after No Mercy and what the, the, the Universal title feud is going to be. But... Braun Strowman needs to win the title. I think it's the perfect place for Braun to get his first championship. And to beat a guy like Brock, Brock Lesnar just adds to his dominance repertoire. And it just makes sense to me. It just You need to have Braun Strowman with the title to make him more credible like as his beast and this monster among men. So I'm, I'm going with Braun Strowman 100% on this one. I don't think Strowman's winning it yet. I want to see him win it, but I want to wait until Summer Survivor Series. I want to make Survivor Series I don't even think Lesnar's going to be there. He's got to be a Survivor He's not series. even booked for Survivor Series yet. I don't think he's going to be there. I think right now we would have known. He's Either probably going to go back to farming for the next couple of months. There's probably some pre-winter farming prep he's got to do for like three months, so we're not going to see his ass for three months. Either way, I'd be happy if Braun won it. I just don't see him winning it now. I think he's going to be a great champion when he does win it. Uh, but I would love to see Braun be the first guy to like no sell every suplex <laughs> like lesser gives him like five suplexes and he just keeps getting back or up. an f5 it gives him an f5 and it just gets right back up i would love to see braun i think the crowd would go sell. absolutely nuts for that and that would make braun look so good if he didn't win the match to at least like he like no sold an f5 and a bunch of suplex i think that would be awesome to establish him as the monster you know yeah i, I would love see to see brock just like go all like <laughs> Get, you know, do one of his, like, shock faces that he does. Yeah. And have Braun <laughs> oh, even going, back Oh, my up. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, ha- like, I would love that. Like, I hope that happens. I hope Braun no-sells, like, every move that Lesnar does on him. Hmm. But I'm, I'm picking Lesnar to retain. So, Lesnar, you got some interesting uh, predictions. Michael Chow puts Lesnar to win by DQ. Then Braun squashes Lesnar after the match to a point where Lesnar vacates the Universal title due to a kayfabe injury. Michael Chow creative. Damn. <laughs> Send that shit in, man. Uh, QB Girl says Brock is not scheduled to be on WWE TV until the possible Royal Rumble, and it might not be true. And Mike Chow saying, I hear the only pay per view he's scheduled for is Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania. So he's only scheduled for the next big four. No other minor pay per view. So if he's not scheduled for any other minor pay per view, I don't see him winning the title in this one. Braun Strowman's going to win it. He'll yeah, go they on. gotta have their great rematch clause. Oh, maybe they'll have it on Raw on Monday, and then something's gonna happen. Brock has not a match Roman Brock interferes and comes back. in, and Superman punches them both, and oh, the big dog Michael Cole can have his orgasm like a, a times a hundred. Uh, but you know the, the, the classic rematch clause: Brock won't ever fight on Raw. He never has since he came back. Yeah, that's right. He hasn't. Why can't we just get rid of the rematch clause, please? <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Oh, I actually forgot. Uh, I asked for people for interesting uh, predictions, and I think our girl here, Cuba Girl, has actually said something. Uh, or she she sent one in. She said, uh, "Can you imagine if Paul Heyman screws over Brock to make Braun the champ and the new next big thing in the WWE?" They have been going off this whole next big thing crap for yeah. like the last couple weeks. Maybe Paul Heyman screws over Brock Lesnar and that I mean, causes him to go into hiding. He screwed him over to go with Big Show. Remember that? Man, I could see it, man. And Braun could use Paul Heyman to talk for him, man. And I know Braun can kind of still talk a little bit, but make make Brock Lesnar full baby face against yeah. Braun Strowman. She also, also why is Bailey put into the women's match? She just came back and we already went over that. But uh, yeah, that's interesting. Paul Heyman uh, screwing over Brock Lesnar. I know there's a lot of people that every single time we get a situation like this, a lot of people think that. 
he's going to screw over and, and screw over Brock Lesnar, but but he has to wait for the the, the right guy, the yeah. right monster to come. Braun Strowman is kind of the guy to do it, man. Mm-hmm. But again, like when Michael Chosen, Lesnar needs Heyman to talk for him because Lesnar, or for him when Lesnar doesn't show up, so. And Lesnar's like Lesnar can't worst... talk, whatever. He can only say suplex city bitch. And other than that, he stare into a camera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, guys, that's our prediction. So we both went with Elias. We both went with Neville. Uh, I picked the Miz. Wait, we both go with the Miz. I picked Miz to retain. Yeah. We both went to Miz. Uh, we both went with Finn Balor. Uh, we both went with Frin- <laughs> R- <laughs> Rollins and Ambrose. Uh, we. Uh, I went with Bailey. He went with Alexa Bliss. I went with John Cena. Corporate Cappy went with Roman Reigns. I'm going go with Braun Strowman. And Corporate Cappy is going with Brock Lesnar. And thank you to Cupid Girl, Michael Chow, who are in the chat right now and giving us your predictions as well. Thank you to Mark for listening. Our boy Mark listening. Mark all from the way Italy. Over in thank Italy. you, man. I don't even know what time it is over there. Yeah, but... Really appreciate it, man. And uh, hope you're having fun over there. Um, our boy Ferrante Cesari. For sure. Other than that, guys, thanks for tuning in back to the channel here. Uh, our glorious No Mercies predictions. We are No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred. Anything we say, pun intended, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred. WP, you can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters and my co-host at Corporate Cappy. We're also on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP. You can watch the podcast on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Make sure you hit that bell icon and the subscribe button. You can also listen to us on the go on Stitcher, iTunes, and Spreaker itself. Trigger also has an app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, as always, Kyle Masters. I am joined by my corporate co-host. He's the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. With some unboxing videos. And we'll see you guys next time. I'm a